Hello and good evening, everybody. I'm Mayuri, Division Director, Division N, and I welcome you all once again to yet another episode of Leadership Unveiled. Unveiled with an N, because we are Division N at District 98. And today my guest is a special guest for me because when I started and I joined leadership, you could say in 2018-19, he was the district director then. Ravi Teja Marapu, Distinguished Toastmaster, a great pleasure and privilege to have you on this show. Welcome and thank you for accepting to be here. No, it's always fun to talk with you and everybody in Division 9. So it always starts with a smile with Division N. So glad, I'm glad, I'm more glad. It does. And for the benefit of our viewers, Ravi is also, and I shall be referring to him as Ravi because that's how we all call him. So Ravi is also uh, with ADP and he's an HR specialist and he's uh, with the payroll manager. So that part is something which I will probably not be venturing into. So Ravi, to give you a little gist into Division N, as you know, with the tremendous support that we've always had from you and other leaders as well. Today we are a division. And uh, in the last eight months now, we have really grown from where we were at 169 members, we are at 289 and beyond and growing. So there has been an immense settled sense of growth in terms of membership, definitely. But now we are in March. And uh, now we are going to step into leadership with new leaders coming forward, area directors, extended teams. There are so many opportunities. And uh, we would love to hear, our members would love to hear from you. So my first question to you would go back to your first stint into leadership. What was the first role that you took at the club level? And who pushed you into it? Was it you yourself or how did it happen? Okay, my first stint in club leadership is being a VPPR of the club. Um, and it happened because the then VPPR had to go for studies. So he, he moved out of that role. So he moved out of the organization and then uh, somehow, I don't know why, maybe he felt I was still uh, available, free because I just joined the organization. So he thought that maybe he, I might do a good job. I still don't know why he chose. I keep asking him sometimes. And he still says, there is no reason to choose you. It just felt right. So so that's how uh, that's how I came into Toastmasters. And BPPR was my first role uh, in, in the club. And it was big. Vice President Public Relations was a big role for a 21-year-old yeah, so, uh, so, so, so to quote Dhananjay, I see something in you was what your uh, then VPPR saw and brought. Oh, there, is, there is nobody else to take it up. So either way. <laughs> <laughs> True. That could also be one reason. But then yeah. after that, from club um, leadership, there was no stopping you. You went on to district, etc. And ultimately with the district leadership as well. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there must have been uh, lots of challenges. I'll not talk really about the challenges. My question would be more with time, because that's one question that I'm asked very often. I don't have time. Yet. So what would you suggest or what advice would you give to someone who wants to come into leadership at the club level or even at the division level now that we're a division? But time is something which they still need to learn. Mm -hmm. um, time is not only something that you, uh, you know, if you look at time as, you know, a scarcity um, when when you are doing things or when you are in a phase of learning, time is also a resource that you need to put in such that, you know, you would learn, you would grow. So you, you cannot look at time only in one dimension. That's, that's very, that's very wrong. I believe it is very wrong. When I, when, when I say time in one dimension is you're looking at time only as if, if I, um, or, or let me put it this way, time is a very, uh, you know, uh, scarcity because you have to give time to only this thing. That is the only thing that I want to give my time to is that, you know, you're growing in that path, but that's not how, how, how it is. You, if you want to, if you want to develop yourself into a well rounded personality, somebody who's open, somebody who is creative, somebody who's innovative, somebody who can understand people around. You You need to invest your time into different pockets, just like stocks. You don't put all your money in one stock, right? And, 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 and then expect that to grow and suddenly something happens to that company and then you are 
you are so you dive you are you, you diversify your portfolio similarly time is also a similar thing you you put some time in your education you put some time in profession you put them some time to your health to your personal life or to your hobbies and then you got to invest them into buckets and only then you will be able to uh, bring uh, or speed up your learning process and that will create that platform so for those of few who say, who who say that you know i do not have time i would say i mean it is okay for uh, if if you do not want to join those masters but is it okay? it is not okay to say that i do not have time to grow i do not have time to learn so where else are you putting that time what is the alternative that you have and as long as you can answer that question i, I don't have a problem with that i so agree with you it's always the uh... the busiest of people who can find time for everything yeah. for family for profession even for their uh, hobbies so it's it's just a question of managing time right absolutely but tell me one more thing ravi do you also believe that some of us are perhaps born with some kind of trait in leadership or do you believe that it is uh, something that we all build up uh, over the years um, of course the tagline is when leaders are made yeah But otherwise uh, what what is what do you really believe in i think there is there are some personal traits that people are born born into mm. uh, you cannot deny that um, i i know for one reason that my mom um, my mom is a, a great a great leader but my sister is a good manager aha i am a mix of both i am a mix of the bad stuff between both of them so you you cannot you cannot be um you cannot be a, a um you cannot you cannot make up yourself or you cannot train yourself to be that person some personality traits do to develop but what is important is what toastmaster stack line says when it says where leaders are made it answered one question forever it it uh, it gives the hope that although i am not a ready made leader i can be a leader i i can i can uh, toastmasters can make me a leader those masters can teach me those skills where i can lead and 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 that is why we all join organizations i am also not born leader so i still remember i always wanted to be captain of the cricket team uh, that i that i that i played when i was in school or college but i was never <laughs> the captain of the cricket team because i was so um, uh, passionate about cricket i cannot control when when i am on the field i i am like virat kohli in a very bad way i was i i you just see the most uh, vulnerable me on the cricket field so the the point is i i never became a um an actual leader un, until i joined those masters and started to you know dig a little bit deeper so then tell me one more thing so those masters you've been at those masters since when was this when you joined those masters 10 2010 so 10 11 20 yes 10, so already 10 10 years going on 11 now uh some uh, application or let us say some learning that you took at those masters but has which has helped you immensely in your profession at uh, at work would there be something that you could share perhaps oh definitely communication comes first absolutely no doubt about it um you know uh, different people have different journeys in those masters i had a different journey my my journey was predominantly on the leadership track than on the communication track so which means that i haven't i haven't contested a lot or i haven't been a um i haven't been in that contesting mode for quite a long time however i've been in in the leadership mode for quite a long time that's my majority part of 6 7 years and hence my communication is purely from a problem solving perspective this is the problem i need to solve hmm. and and what should i do how should i talk to my team how should i talk to my uh, you know superiors how should i talk to my uh, you know members how should i talk to my vendors how should i talk to di that's what was the whole focus so for me the communication track was one of the biggest plus so for if if i have to say the top 3 things that i really learned in 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 those masters the first one is if somebody if a leadership presentation is happening in my organization whether it is about the vision of uh, what we're going to achieve or project objectives um how we are going to do it you know the soft part of it you getting my not the financial part of it the softer part of that vision 
I get it very easily compared to my colleagues because I know what I know the language that they are speaking. I understand what what is their intent. I understand where they are going. So for me, it is easier to 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 absorb those leadership presentations and then therefore spontaneously ask questions. So that gave gave me an edge, uh, very very superior edge on compared to some of my colleagues of my age. The second one is definitely delegation. Delegation was uh, one of the strengths um, of a very successful leader. You, you've got to delegate. You can't keep worrying about everything that's happening around you. And that's one of the most important team. And, and, and the sub part of the delegation is also creating effective teams, creating a culture where, where you can delegate and get the work done. So delegation in a broader sense was one of the biggest learnings. And the third is, is about what values really mean. And uh, that made a lot of difference to me because I was always confused between people who speak about values to the people who practice. And values always have those gray areas. And the gray areas started to thin a little bit as I moved on uh, in, in, in Toastmasters. So these three are the learnings that I've taken back uh, to professional and personal life. So I can actually um, um, identify immediately with the delegation part because when I joined Toastmasters, Ravi, in, during your term as district director, I was a director. I wanted to do everything myself. You know, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And yeah. gradually, I have seen this change in my own self. Now it's more of delegation and follow up. But yes, I do have to have the follow up. But then I'm not doing everything myself. So this learning has come over here. No book will teach me. This is the experience that I've got at Toastmasters, how to start delegating and what gets done. There are teams in place, there are members in place. And so this is definitely something that even I have taken very, very uh, positively from Toastmasters. Absolutely. Among, amongst others. So um, I would also like to know from you, Rani, we all at Toastmasters also have leaders who not necessarily at Toastmasters, but also outside. Who yeah. have inspired us through their actions, through their conduct sometimes also through their words. So is there a leader today who um, you would have loved to work with, but is now no more? So uh, is there someone, or maybe even present, a leader who inspires you? And not necessarily at Toastmasters. I would love to hear yeah, yeah. No, Absolutely. I think the first one was Jay Prakash Narayan. If you know Lok Sattva, you know Jay Prakash Narayan. I was amazed about the ability of him to bring content to, to any topic. I mean, Jay Prakash Narayan was a retired IS officer who started the Lok Sattva movement and then it moved into a Lok Sattva party. I was so impressed with his arguments, with his point of views, that uh, when I was in my college days, I was a very active, I was a youth wing leader. A youth ah, leader of Calcutta. You were a leader earlier on also. No. It, it, it happened because we were all college students then, right? So I, it was a small division of the entire constituency. Where I, where my role is not, I mean, it is very wrong, you know, in politics, everybody's called a leader, but then I was only more of a data analyst and a manager kind of a guy, not a leader at all. Uh, then, so I, I used to manage a few, uh, a, a bunch of people and then, but, but the point is, I was so excited about his, his, uh, his thoughts and his ideas that I wanted to know a little bit more about how he has developed this entire political party, how he's running it and so on. So now he's no more in politics. He, he only did it for two years for two terms or more precisely. And that made very, uh, that that gave me a lot of, uh, uh, you know, focus. For example, he taught me that whatever you're doing in life, you have to have a purpose, mm. right? You cannot be a VPPR of a club and then look blank. And I say, you know, why I'm doing it? There has to be some problem or some purpose that you're trying to achieve in the time space that you have. So he, he affected me like that. And he is somebody whom I always loved working with. And the second person was my managing director when I joined ADP Shakti Sagar. Uh, an amazing leader from in a corporate world. I mean, he, he is like a saint in the corporate world. You will never see leaders of his breed. He is very rare um, in, in, a, in a place where it is all about profits. It's all about performance. Here comes a guy who has a totally different perspective about... Uh, um, you know, what success means, what performance means, and his respect that he had, you know, no barriers attached. Uh, he was like, although I'm the managing director, you can always walk in into, into his room. I still remember the day when we had moved into a new building 
he saw he saw small small stripes on manager doors on, on manager doors on the glass doors of the manager so he, he pulled up a scale and started removing those uh, glass doors he said okay, whatever you're doing inside the cabin everything has to be visible you should always be available in that and and some of those those things he never had a pa he, he brought it on coffee everything I, th- that's when i realized okay a leader can also be like this and still be successful i think these two are are my first and foremost uh, uh, people that have inspired me wonderful wonderful so sometimes i think i've heard you also talk about shakti sagar uh, in one of your speech yeah. probably your speeches or maybe i've also heard him on stage i don't really remember he, did, he, did. he was there when uh, i took oath as a district director aha so that's why i probably have this big memory right yes. but then that's that's really very inspiring and um, so ravi tell me one more thing for our members particularly uh, if i would say for members of division and only uh, per se uh they i we really want them to come forward and take on the various roles and whenever they feel that there is a hesitation do you have some kind of mantra that you would love to share a short uh, mantra to all members who are going to be watching this video to come forward take the uh, step and do not be scared about it would there be something that you would like to just address them share with them i will not say a mantra but one thing i will tell you is never be scared i mean um never be never be scared i somehow had this intuition whenever i was in groups uh, you know i have a question in my mind i wanted to ask but i'm scared to ask hmm. because what what would be my colleagues thinking about it or what would be you know i know my director is there in the call would he think that i asked a very stupid question or um, or or something happened now if you start being scared it creeps into you from all directions it doesn't end there so so first of all never be scared of uh, taking up any opportunity go go with it with complete uh, confidence right you when, whenever you are taking a decision take a decision with complete confidence don't be scared if you don't want to be a club officer don't be scared saying that okay if i if i if i'm not now what will happen tomorrow or if you want to be a club officer or there is a senior in this group or you know what will happen to my profession what will happen to my personal life so never never take uh, never let the feeling of um, that you know being scared come into picture in any which way there are three things that i will say whoever wants to take up leadership roles the first and foremost thing is you why do you want to take up a leadership role should should always be uh, because you want to learn you want to learn a skill you want to learn how to deal with people you want to learn, learn how to lead a group to a particular objective that should be very clear if you if you are willing to learn if you are willing to improve that is very important and the first for the first time i took i took up area directorship i was blank i have no idea why i have taken area directorship at all but i have taken it because i lost in the last division contest and i was like very angry said okay now i take an area directorship <laughs> because something did not strike well and and it was a wrong opinion the wrong thing that i have done but once i have taken it i have never backed out and and what happened was once i took that plunge into area directorship i ended up 7 years later in ipd and that's how that's how the journey happened and it was a very nice journey so never ever um never ever think to come into this role to prove a point to um, because there is nobody or uh, you know you want to show your dominance no it is that's not how it it, it works you come in here to learn you will complete your learning and then you will move on the second thing that you will always have to understand is that just like anything leadership is also an investment journey you are investing your time you are investing your money you are investing your personal time as well as professional time into it which means that you have to get something you you have to understand that it is important don't just do it for the heck of doing it. it you are investing all of these resources in in your leadership journey so better you get something out of it otherwise you will feel crumbled you will feel as if you know i wasted my entire time in those masters uh, that's not that's not a waste of time the third thing that i that i would tell you when this might be very relevant to only a few people is take up leadership roles to start liking people around you to start appreciating people around you 
and that's that is something that we lack intrinsically at least at least some of us because i always had this skepticism are so you know you are grown up in this middle class family where where even if you want to give something to somebody or if somebody is giving you something you are like there is kuch kuch to matlab hai iska kuch to matlab hai ki nobody is going to give you for free or nobody that, that's how you are brought up you know in in our generation at least that's the middle class mentality is right but only when you take up leadership roles you understand how people voluntarily come up and help you just for the just for you know because they they have found some resonance in your thought process or in your vision they are ready to you'll start liking people you start liking people who they are so you would leadership will teach you to like people around you and that's a very very important concept and a positive concept which no other uh, role will teach so these are the three reasons why i am giving you to take up and in this in this covid period all these three makes a lot of difference uh, trust me i i'm i'm being i'm i'm being doing my mba right now and i could see the difference um, that you know i can bring on the table whenever there is a group discussion or a, or a project discussion happening on very topics uh compared to some of my colleagues so that 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 adds a hell of a lot of value if you are a leader in an organization for quite some time excellent ravi this is something that i, I, I this is really very nice you know the fact that um, at those masses that's what we always say right we are not going to be uh, judged we are going to be so that's what in a society normally we jump to conclusions we assume uh, abc and that's where we start judging people like you said in a normal society But when you come to those masters, you start understanding, and you start getting more compassionate. You start liking people, like you said. And I can see that in my own self. The choice of words, the way I started uh, interacting with people, I can see the change happening. And like I said earlier, also there's no book that can teach you this. Those masters helps you grow into uh, this individual that that you eventually do become. The, the other thing that happens. if you if you are not able to like people as you will start liking yourself a little bit more or at least i am not like that person i think <laughs> that also happens yes, that is also so important that is what everybody yes, says start loving yourself first uh, yeah 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 and it is amazing how those masters brings out the best in you to serve without asking anything in return and yet you get much more in return so yeah. this this is just amazing Thank you so much, Ravi, for your time today, and it has been a pleasure to talk with you. And I look forward to meeting you in person. I hope soon. I will too. I don't know when, but definitely soon. And all the best for your exams and your studies. And uh, yes, we will meet again very soon. Thank you so much once again on behalf of Citizen Ed. Thanks, Mayuri. All of you have a great year. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.